Hello, my renegades. Welcome back to Rogue Radio. My name is Sarah Jane, and uh, yeah, I'm back. I moved out, got married. Life is good. So, um, how are y'all doing? Um, I did find out that you guys are starting to really like the episodes of The Pedophiles, which I think is awesome. I think um, a lot of people, not just me, really hate pedophiles, of course. I feel like they need to be exposed, and I think right now in this time that it's starting to get, um, people are starting to open their eyes and starting to expose a lot of things in Hollywood, and they're not at all scared anymore, which is awesome. I'm so proud of everybody who has been protesting at churches, protesting at the CNN building, which I will talk about in a Rogue News segment very shortly. Um, And I just, I love the fact that pedophiles are now starting to get exposed because it has been way too long. They have victimized so many children and so many underage actors and actresses in Hollywood, okay? That Hollywood is a pedophile ring. That's all it is. And um, I wanted to talk about one of the main pedophiles in Hollywood. And his name is Dan Schneider. Okay, before we jump into the whole information download. There's going to be a lot of um, X, Y generation kids that probably won't know who Dan Schneider is. If you weren't born in the 90s and didn't watch Kenan and Kel, Drake and Josh, Victorious, um, iCarly, all that, Zoe 101, you probably will not at all know who Dan Schneider is. But Dan Schneider is one of the main directors and producers of multiple Nickelodeon shows that I have listed. And the list goes on even after that. And uh, he first started out working in a computer store. And uh, he was approached by a producer to act in a movie called The Final Grade, I think? It was way back in the 80s, I want to say. And after that, he quit his job. Uh, at the computer store, got a job as a pizza delivery guy while he kept on looking for new, you know, shows and movies to act in. Um, I'm not sure how he got into Nickelodeon, but he ended up, you know, proposing different uh, shows such as All That. I think that was like his first uh, well-produced show that got on the air. And, um, so even after that, he started spitting out really good shows. I'm not going to lie. These are really good 90 shows. But what happens in the background of the production of these shows is quite hideous. So, um, after that, I want to say, um, around the time Amanda Bynes comes into all that, all that ends up, um, getting wrapped up. And then Amanda Show comes on the air. And there's probably multiple reasons why Amanda, as she grew up, kind of got gone a little, I don't want to say crazy, because I feel like young child stars, they don't need to be called crazy. They're being victimized. And to us in the outside world, I feel like we think of them as crazy because they're doing crazy things, but this is their way of coping with the trauma that has been inflicted in their lives. Because if you think about it, child acting is very, very demanding. Even Jeanette McCurdy in a podcast interview said that um, a lot of child stars feel like They don't have much of a sense of identity when it comes to their character that they play and who they are themselves because that's the first thing that they work on is that character, not themselves. So 
So uh, I guess a few years back, Dan Schneider was actually fired um, for certain allegations, which I will go into later. But um, Dan Schneider has been accused of multiple things since he has become a household name. One, of course, being a pedophile and having a children's foot fetish. Yes. You, you, yeah. you heard that right. That's disgusting. It's, uh, it feels disgusting even saying it, honestly. But now before you doubt what I say, go back and do your research. Do your own research because if you look at iCarly, Victorious, um, all that, even the Amanda show, feet come up a lot. Bare feet come up a lot in those shows and in those episodes. Um, and sometimes, like, now that you know this, maybe you'll understand that this guy is kind of nasty. But we're gonna keep going forward, though. Um, it's not hard to see that the feet of underage actors are on display in a lot, if not all, of the episodes he's directed. It's been said by multiple actors and actresses that... Before they audition, they have to take off their shoes and run around the room talking about how much they love being barefoot. He's also been tweeting creepy notifications on Twitter to endorse his shows, such as Sam and Cat. Sam and Cat is probably one of the most recent ones in a few years, like a couple years time. And um, this is what he tweeted. Sam and Cat tomorrow, right on the bottom of your foot. Take a picture. And use hashtag Sam and Cat Saturday. We'll retweet and follow until our fingers are sore. What kind of 40, 50 year old director or even man decides to say this to a young audience that watches Sam and Cat? Or that watches any sort of young teenage preteen child show? It's really disgusting. And it, this isn't like the first um, tweet that he's ever made. There's plenty and I will keep going. Um, if you even research the name Dan Schneider and look at the images on Google, you'll see him getting too close for comfort with these child actresses. Um, they look uncomfortable. Like, he's basically the Joe Biden of Nickelodeon. I'm not sorry that I said that. So now we have come to why Dan Schneider, why was get in the back of my van Dan Schneider um, fired from Nickelodeon when they've been together since the 80s? Well, in short, alleged abusive behavior. That's right. The network and Schneider, who have been together since the 80s, mutually agreed not to extend production deal with his company Schneider's Bakery. No reason for the split, um, not from the mouths of the company uh, Nickelodeon or Dan Schneider that decided to keep silent, but other sources say um, that this split was years in the making because of multi multiple complaints of abusive behavior. Um, it is well, I guess it's well documented that he has temper issues, it's what um, was been quoted. Uh, Nickelodeon says Dan works under a cloud of suspicion because of the relationships he has with young stars and, on his shows and notes that he shared photos of actresses' toes on social media. Well, that's disgusting. This guy's a creep. But now we're going to get into the victims right after this message. You want to know how I make some really awesome podcasts? It's called Anchor. For one, it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for free so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcasts with no minimum listenership. It is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And download your free anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started who's gonna join me come on 
Let's have some fun. All right, now we're going to go into the victims. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do a second part of this episode of Dan Schneider. It all depends on how much information I'm able to put in an episode. Um, I do my best to do my research and all this stuff I've learned from the internet. Um, Sometimes it can be true or false. Don't take my research as truth. Do your own research. That's what I totally encourage anybody to do. Um, Now, if at any time I talk about a victim and refuse to say their name, it is only because I want to protect their identities and keep them safe from any type of harassment. Okay. There's a podcast called The Revenge of the Sis, which I've actually watched about, like, two episodes of their um, YouTube channel. On their YouTube channel. It's really good. I'm going to put it in the description below. Um, if you want to know more about this, uh, topic. So, an anonymous guest talks about what really goes on in the interviews and the auditions that Dan Schneider organizes. Her audition for Zoe 101 was, she was instructed that she had to take off her shoes and run around in front of the camera talking about how much she loved being barefoot. The kids that were picked were wearing short shorts, spaghetti straps, and revealing clothing, short skirts, and stuff like that. That was their recommended wardrobe for these children, which is disgusting to me. Why would you want a kid wearing short shorts and spaghetti straps? Like, that's... You'd think that a child who is going into uh, a professional audition you think you would want them to wear a dress or a suit or something professional, but no. Dan Schneider wanted them in revealing clothing. That is a big red flag. And actually, some of the parents were okay with that. Um, They were okay with it, according to her. Um, Her mother pulled her out of the audition, asked where the tapes and the pictures of her daughter were going to. She asked for names, businesses, and companies. Mother of the year, for one. Give her a medal, a trophy. Come on now. Um, She was actually told that she wasn't allowed to know where her children's, where her child's pictures, like her headshots and the audition video was going. That's kind of sketchy. That's not kind of sketchy. That's very sketchy. Her daughter ended up being blacklisted, no agents, and no work. So when you're blacklisted, it basically means you probably offended somebody. Um, You acted a certain way that displeased the producers and executives. All this woman did was ask questions that any parent who is concerned about the children around them, especially their own children... I would be asking the same thing if I was a mom. So, 2004, an article came out called Groomed to be All That. It was a two-week acting boot camp. There were pool parties and no adult supervision besides the producers and the staff. One of the staff members was Brian Peck, who was a dialogue coach and was a convicted child molester and sex offender. Now, okay, um, why would a respectable, now I say this with air quotes because sarcastically, we all know that Dan Schneider is a creep, okay? He's scum. But to the company and to the people that are investing in this man, How does a respectable producer and director hire somebody who has has this um, background? Um, The report, the police report says that there was lewd acts against a child of 14, sodomy of a foreign object um, against a... 16 year old I'm not sure Uh, I read it It, it's not okay Um, 16 months in prison and then he was back in business with children he was back being a dialogue coach for children Um, 
Zoe 101 got canceled because Jamie Lynn Spears got pregnant. Now, I don't know if this is true. Don't take this as truth. There has been so many rumors about who the father is of Jamie Lynn Spears' child. So people say that Dan Schneider was the father. And then there was another person that um, Jamie was affiliated with that was also accused as being the father. That is just tabloid news. We all know that Jamie Lynn became a mother very early in her life. And that's all we know. Uh, Actually, that's all really what we know. We don't know who exactly the father is. So it could have been Dan Schneider or it could have been somebody else on, you know, in her life. Uh, It has been reported an extra on the Amanda show was reported that he was paid by Dan to massage, um, no, no, hang on. An extra on the Amanda show, uh, it was reported that this extra was paid by Dan to massage, to massage and tickle their feet. And then Dan paid, then that's kind of really, why the fuck would you do that to a child? Remember, the Amanda show was a child cast with Amanda Bynes, Josh Peck, Drake Bell, um, sometimes Kenan and Kel, you know, Kenan Thompson. And and these kids were exposed to certain situations and really weird ass situations like what I just said. That is the weirdest, that is the weirdest one. But, um, now we're going to go into um, one actress that was on Zoe 101 that um, has been, that had been bullied a lot in uh, her career in Zoe 101. Um, I, she does not talk about what Dan did on set um, according to like pedophilia or sexual acts or anything like that. She refuses to talk about that. And that's fine. That is her comfort zone. She doesn't want to talk about that. She doesn't have to. But um, this actress on Zoe 101 does hint on her Twitter that, um, you know, Dan Schneider did have some alleged pedophile uh, behavior on the show. So, excuse me. It has been said that this co-star wasn't getting along with Jamie Spears. That was what the press kind of put out at the time. Um, Some drama between them. She wasn't invited to Zoe 101 reunion. Um, When she was a kid, she wasn't allowed to be invited to any Jamie Lynn Spears' like sleepovers and, you know, all of that stuff. So she's been seen talking about how she's dealing with trauma during the hype of the reunion. Um, She was bullied, picked on. Um, One actress actually pushes her into the rocks in one scene, calling her names. Um, I guess this was, I think, the last episode of season one where, I guess, um, her and this person kind of run out behind some rocks. And I guess they were getting ready to do this, but this person pushes her into the rocks And then when the camera starts rolling, she had to put on a professional face and act like they were best friends. And there's a lot more that she's gone through. And I, I, wow. And she actually talks about this on YouTube as well. Um, On Instagram, she went live one time on Instagram uh, being interviewed by some people. So, uh... Like I said, I'm not going to mention her name. Uh, she tells mom, her mom uh, tries to get a hold of someone to talk about the incident. And I guess the executives and the people that were working, they did not want to talk about it. They didn't want to deal with the problem. They basically treated this co-star like dirt. Like she didn't matter compared to Jamie Lynn Spears. Because as you know... Um, when a certain star is being picked to be debuted out into society for 
uh, more than just Zoe 101 or, you know, when they start out, that their focus is on that one star. They want to make that star look good. This co-star, which everything that I'm explaining, I don't condone, but this is how show business works. Everything is focused on one person. There is a reason why there is a star and then there are co-stars and then there are extras. Extras are not important. Co-stars aren't as important. The star is the focus. The focus of the show. So when Jamie Lynn Spears was being debuted on Zoe 101, of course there was biased um, opinions about her and and why she was never getting in trouble, why she wasn't um, able to never get in trouble or she wasn't ever in the spotlight of scandal um, at the time until she got pregnant. But uh, So the voice of this co-star that she worked with they didn't care about what she was going through. It was all about Jamie Lynn Spears going out and kind of like, I don't want to say grooming because of course grooming is obvious in show business. That's something that shouldn't happen, but it does. But I'm saying she was being built up into being a movie star. That's what, that was the plan for Jamie Lynn. Nobody else mattered, even though that they hired people you can't necessarily have a one-woman show. But the co-stars are there to make Janie Lynn Spears look good. That was their only job. And the fact that this co-star, who rightfully so complained about Jamie Lynn Spears being a bitch to her and, and hurting her and all of this stuff... I mean, they never listened because, oh, we need to focus on Jamie. That's not okay. At all. Um, I guess at the end of season one, the wrap up and then the beginning of season two, this person that pushed this actress into the rocks was fired. She didn't come back for season two. And uh, so yeah, another time, um, I guess, what? how she explained it, there's a system when it comes to underage stars being escorted to certain uh, shooting spots. So, uh, I forget what she called them, but we're going to call them the escort um, because they actually have to tell the mom where they're exactly going at this and this and this time. So, um, the, so the mom knows where to go if she needs her daughter um, so she knows exactly where her child is at. On this day, the escort that takes her to and from the shooting locations leads her to Jamie's trailer saying that Jamie wants to talk to her. And she goes, okay, okay, that's cool. Um, I wonder what she wants to talk to me about. Now, know this, Jamie Lynn Spears never liked this co-star. Never liked her. This co-star, um, according to her, never did anything wrong to Jamie. All she was trying to do was try to be friends with Jamie Lynn. Because she's even said in this interview that she was, she kind of grew up with adults and she was really psyched and really happy to be around kids her age and understand that she's able to have more friendships than than the ones that she has with other kids and adults and stuff like that. Anyway, this escort leads her inside. I guess Jamie just like bolts towards the back of her trailer and Britney Spears comes out. She just comes out. And, you know, this co-star is just sitting here wondering what's going on. And then all of a sudden, she's wondering why Jamie isn't, like, talking to her and everything. Never did anything to her. 
then Britney Spears comes out and harasses and berates her to the point that this co-star vomits. She is so traumatized to the point where she vomits in front of Britney Spears. Britney Spears is saying, I'll make sure you never have another job again. Don't ever try to hurt my sister. My sister is, you know, just basically harassing her because apparently Jamie Lynn Spears has been cooking up something in the background saying that she's the one being harassed. She's the one being bullied. And she's the one being berated and harassed by this co-star. Now, if I was the mother seeing my child come back to her trailer, seeing that she's vomiting and getting sick because of so much trauma that has been inflicted onto her by the kids and by the directors and by the escorts and by the family members of the, you know, staff members and, and the kids and it, it this is awful. If I was that mom, I'd try to find somebody who's responsible and beat the crap out of them. Honestly. I I would not stand for that. But, um... Yeah. But at some point uh, before this, I, sh I forgot about this, Victoria Justice comes in to be um, the replacement of the... I, I guess it, she's the replacement for the actress that got fired um, from season one into the transition of season two. So Victoria Justice um, and this co-star were very good friends. She was so happy that she was able to have sleepovers and hang out with her and actually have a friend on set that she can relate to. And then one day... Victoria Justice just turns on her, doesn't talk to her anymore, and in, it's going back to this circle of hell that she was going around and around with. And she didn't actually give a reason why Victoria Justice decided to do this, or, um, you know, she doesn't necessarily know what kind of disagreement. She did say that there was a disagreement, but she didn't really touch upon it, so um, her and Victoria Justice just kind of split as best friends and ended up whispering and, you know, talking and behind her back and all of this stuff. Like, this is... Now, I'm not saying that these child stars are awful. It must be very hard to be a child star being told what to do for certain reasons onset and offset. I don't know the full context of this. Like I said, child stars go through a lot. A lot. So I'm not doing... I'm not saying these actresses' names in order to hurt them or to upset them. I am merely saying that these child actresses and actors are all kind of in the same boat. They're in a confusing time. They are in this time where their identity lies in the character that they play. So it's basically high school or a popularity contest to where the kids have to play in order for them to be stars. And we all know that Victoria Justice got her own show called Victorious. So that was probably her instructions. Who knows? To, to be a terrible person to one of her best friends in order to get her own show. Who knows? That's none of my business, but that's just the way I'm kind of clicking things together. But, um, let's see, what else? So this co-star was bullied on a regular basis by everybody. Um, she did say that some of the boys were kind of nice to her, but not a lot. Um, 
I guess she said after the incident with Jamie Lynn Spears and Britney Spears um, in her trailer, um, her mom started getting very furious and saying that she needs to talk to the executive, she needs to talk to Dan Schneider, she needs to talk to somebody about this. And so the executives come in like the men in black and Dan Schneider comes in with a smirk on his face like he always does to this co-star. That's what she said. And instead of saying in a very concerned voice, what's wrong, so-and-so, it's what's wrong now? It's what's wrong now? What's wrong now, co-star? What is wrong now? Like, she was the instigator of all of this. And like I said, I'm not taking anybody's uh, statements as truth. This is all from this co-star's point of view. So, she ends up painfully talking about what's been going on, what happened with Jamie Spears and Britney Spears, and... Um, he basically kind of rushes her onto set. She's like, he's like, well, you need to get on set, but we'll talk about this later, and I have a gift for you. And the gift was a portable DVD player. Um, back in the day, that was an awesome thing to have. And um, I guess to her it felt like nothing really got taken care of. Nothing happened. And uh, that... Nothing really came of the whole dispute. It was like basically just, all right, well, you need to get on set, so clean yourself up. Here's a DVD player to, to shut your mouth, basically. And um, she ended up having to go out and pretend that she wasn't traumatized to the point where she got sick. And there were... You know, all the kids were around her, you know, squirting water guns at her. And, I mean, this whole time, she was the pinnacle of the person. She was the person. She was everybody's lightning rod. That's what I'm trying to say. She was everybody's lightning rod. Everybody took their frustrations out on her. And she was the person that everybody picked on. She was the weird girl. I don't want to say weird girl, but you know what I mean. When someone, when a whole bunch of people make fun of a person, it's usually because they think that they're weird or that they're mean or nasty or they're just something wrong with them. And these child stars, of course, go along with it and they end up making fun of her and traumatizing her. And she just didn't want to be a part of it anymore. She didn't feel safe. And um, even her only friend, Victoria Justice, that was on set, turned on her. I don't understand that one. <laughs> that one's terrible. But it's, it's awful to have a friend turn their back on you in order for to be another popular character on set. That, that's wrong. I, I honestly, I only know a little bit of how much, like, show business goes just by researching and how, you know, I, I've kind of found out some things about show business and how it works and stuff like that. I've never been a child star, nor will my kids be, hell no. But what I'm saying is that these kids were manipulated into being nasty in order for them to get a starring role. It was basically dog eat dog. Y'all know that saying. And uh, it wasn't, it's not okay to have children pick on children in order for them to climb up to the top. That's, I feel like that's not how show business goes, but you know, this happens and it happens more than you think. But, yeah, she was bullied on a regular basis. Dan was not helpful at all. Um, so, yeah, she was horrified during, um, during the set 
uh, a lot of the times during filming. There was a board meeting that her mom organized with a lawyer that later on was in cahoots with Nickelodeon um, to keep this co-star, uh, her mouth shut. And um, the executives ask if she can, if this co-star can go in the room, the meeting room, without her mom. Her mom says no, calls the lawyer, and at the time they didn't know that this person was on the side of Nickelodeon, and the, the lawyer was like, oh no, she'll be fine, she's with Dan, she's okay. She ends up going in alone. I would not allow that at all if she was my kid. I would not allow that at all. I'd be like, no, listen, you're going to listen to me, trash, okay? No, what you're doing to my kid is wrong. But she ends up going in alone, this co-star. Uh, and they sit her down saying that she was basically saying like, this isn't your show, this isn't called the uh, so-and-so 101 show and saying, basically making her feel like she was the narcissistic spoiled brat. They're manipulating her into thinking that that was who she was. And um, Dan Schneider had sat across from her and he was not happy. Like, he had such an irritated face. Um, and saying that, you know, nothing comes of child stars, so if you quit now, you'll probably be nobody in Hollywood and all this stuff. Trying to threaten her and to keep, to keep going into this show until it was, you know, over. And, um, Dan was, I guess, trying to be, pretending to be a little bit more, like, sympathetic, I guess, saying like, oh, maybe this was true, and maybe you can't handle it. Maybe this co-star can't handle show business and all this stuff. She had no voice. All of her experiences were irrelevant. And nothing happens to child stars if they leave. So, she was basically cornered by Dan Schneider and his executives and the people that he worked for. Saying, nothing will come of you if you quit. Nothing. Saying that they have leverage over her not necessarily evidence of anything, but they're dangling this prize in front of her face. If you quit, you can't have this. If you quit, you will be blacklisted. If you quit, this will happen to you. Basically blackmailing her. As a child. As a child star being blackmailed into staying into show business and continuing being harassed and bullied by child stars. Now, I know Nickelodeon has um, known about this for so long. They've known about this. The only reason why Nickelodeon has decided to cut ties with Dan Schneider now is because there are so much, there's so much evidence, so many people coming up out of the woodwork now, even child stars that have been traumatized who are now adults that are coming out and saying, I was harassed. I was in a bad situation, in a bad environment. I was traumatized. <sighs> and because of that, Nickelodeon had to cut ties because they would be losing money. Only reason. They still have SpongeBob on. We all know that SpongeBob is a very preferred cartoon. If you don't believe me, go watch it. SpongeBob's um, address on his license is actually Epstein's Island, if you Google it. So, subliminal messaging right there. Why? Pedophilia has been in society for such a long time. It has been a form of control in order to manipulate children into being somebody that they want them to be. There's a reason why child stars, when they grow up, they go crazy 
And when I say crazy, I, I mean mentally ill. Where they get um, addicted to porn or to child porn. They get addicted to crack, cocaine, meth, all of this stuff. We've seen it in the tabloids. We've seen it. And it's because their sense of identity is being taken away. And by the time Nickelodeon or Disney spits them out, they don't know who they are. They only know the characters that they played. And because of that, they don't know what to do. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, have a good day. Have a good night. Um... Thank you for everybody who has been listening, who has been staying um, on my uh, channel for so long. I appreciate the crap out of you. I love you so much. I will see you guys later. Goodbye.